The following program may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Dilly Show! Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Dilly Show. I am your host, of course. This is Dilly. And just recently, one of my episodes got taken down from the podcast platforms. So sad. The episode was... There was a few different topics we covered. The main event was One Hit Wonders. So that episode is just gone now. Because apparently I used copyrighted music in that video... I don't remember using copyrighted music. I try to stay away from it, but I probably did at some point. I don't fucking know. But I figured, you know, I didn't really like the way I did it in that podcast anyway. I didn't like the way I talked about the one-hit wonders because I just kind of did a list. Lists are boring. We, as a society, thrive from competition and competition alone. So right now what I'm doing is I am actually going to be putting... One Hit Wonders against other One Hit Wonders to see which is the best One Hit Wonder song. So we are doing a bit of a tournament style. It's going to be 1v1, of course, because I don't know how you would do it any other way. And we're going to do the first round and get out all the fucking losers. And then we'll keep moving on to the winners of each debate. The winners of each round I guess I guess it would technically be rounds so we're gonna get this started and we're gonna get this started right away so the first matchup in today's episode is funky town versus take on me here we go we're already starting off pretty hot because these are both pretty classic songs but they are both one day wonders they fit the criteria to a t so we got take on me a classic 80s staple which has been used in just about everything we have funky town which was in shrek it was in shrek 2 shrek 2 but it it was in shrek take on me was not in shrek (laughs) both are amazing songs it's kind of hard to actually pick between the two Funky Town was also in Malcolm in the Middle. Got to, got to, got to think about Malcolm in the Middle here. And you, you partially have to think about what the songs were in. You also have to look at if the songs are any good, because it could be a piece of shit song. But if it's in a bunch of shit, then it's still a piece of shit song. So, Take on Me, classic as hell. Funky Town, a classic in its own right, but not quite the same. I think Take on Me wins round number one against Funky Town. All right, next we got Baby Got Back versus Kiss from a Rose. It's amazing how it went from like here to like here, (laughs) especially with Baby Got Back. Like it's a classic song, but it's Baby Got Back. It's, It's Baby Got Back. Like, come on. So this is another kind of weird one. Kiss from a Rose is a great song. But it was never as mainstream, never as big, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Not every good song will be mainstream, and not every song that is mainstream is a good song. Uh, Baby Got Back was fucking huge when it came out, though. And I mean, it still lives on. You know, Nicki Minaj, I'm saying this as if it was recent. I remember when she did Anaconda, and like she like sampled the fuck out of that song. But like looking back, like that was like 11 years ago, something like that. Like, it was like over a decade ago that Anaconda even came out. Anyway, both these songs are old as shit, but I think Kiss from a Rose takes it. I love that song so much. You could put that song on any occasion, and I will bop. I will fucking bop. Because you can cry to that song. You can fuck to... (laughs) You can do anything to that song, okay? It's a happy song. It's a sad song. It's an amazing song. It It can make you feel any emotion. So Kiss from a Rose takes it. Sorry, baby, got back. You can definitely fuck to that one, too, though. Uh, Next, we have Come On Eileen versus Achy Breaky Heart. Ooh, okay. Dexy's Midnight Riders. That's that's one you don't hear of very much. Uh, Neither is Billy Ray Cyrus. I mean, he did that fucking song with Lil Nas, but I mean, uh, Billy Ray is an interesting guy. Come On Eileen is classic, though. Achy Breaky Heart is a fantastic piece of 90s, but Come On Eileen is just such a classic song. This one's actually kind of hard. For the meme, I want to say Achy Breaky Heart. But, like, Come On Eileen is a better song, but, like, 
Iggy Breaky Heart, it's different. It is different. Man, this is a hard one, actually. I'm not going to lie. This is kind of difficult. Ah, oh, fuck. What are we going to go with here? You know what? We're going with Aki Breaky Heart on this one. It might not be the right call, but it's the call we're making. Aki Breaky Heart moves ahead. All right, next we have I'm Too Sexy versus Bittersweet Symphony. This one's kind of not fair. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> no, I'm Too Sexy is a great song. Don't get me wrong. Gyration Nation, you know, like I'm all about that shit. Nobody knows what I'm talking about when I say Gyration Nation, which makes that all the better. Uh, there was a wrestling tag team in St. John, New Brunswick, who came out to I'm Too Sexy. And it worked so well, because they were Chippendales dancer type dudes. It, it's a great song. I just have nostalgia for that reason. But I mean, it's a great song. I'm Too Sexy for my shirt. He's so sexy it hurts. But then you have Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. And it's like, man, that's like actually an amazing song. And they win. I'm giving it to Bittersweet Symphony. I'm too sexy's classic, but Bittersweet Symphony is just better. Uh, oh, this one is a hard one, folks. Never Gonna Give You Up versus Electric Avenue. These are both killer fucking songs. Like, amazing, amazing, amazing fucking songs. I don't even know where this one's gonna go. Because these are both classics, too. Like, you gotta think. Electric Avenue is like, fucking 70s eddie grant old as shit but it's like it's an amazing song you hear that song and you get fucking pumped but then there's never gonna give you up which is like the biggest internet meme that ever was and it's actually a great song too mind you my favorite fortnite emote <laughs> there's a lot going on with never gonna give you up so as much as electric avenue hauls ass in every single department never gonna give you up is the fucking goat Never gonna give you up takes this fucking round. I'm sorry, Eddie Grant. Next, I touch myself versus I'm gonna be 500 miles. It's so weird just saying I touch myself because, I mean, that's strange. Uh, any, anywho, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be is like a classic song, but like I touch myself is such a fucking banger. Like, it's an amazing amazing song and like i never thought i'd say that about that song but like, every time i watch austin powers i think it's the th it might actually be the first one that this song plays in it's like oh my god this song kicks so much fucking ass the drums in it the guitar the bass like everything in that song is actually really really good it's a shame that i vinyls didn't do more but i touch myself as an amazing song i'm gonna be as great too it's the proclaimers big song like it's classic. I've heard it so many times, though. It's like the car commercial song. Like, I can't stand that song. I can just hear the fucking Geico lizard coming out and being like, buy car insurance. Like, I don't even know if it was ever used in a Geico commercial. It's just, it feels like a commercial song. Like, it's been in so many things. It's just so overdone that I'm sick of it. And I touch myself is so great. So I touch myself takes it. Easy peasy. All right, next, Staying Alive versus Barbie Girl. Oh, my God. Whew. You wouldn't think Barbie Girl would stand a chance because it's going up against Staying Alive. Like, come on, Bee Gees. That's how you fucking pump people's hearts to make them come back alive. It's an amazing, amazing song. They had so much hair, but not that much in the front. They had the tight pants, the fucking jackets on. But then there's Barbie Girl. Which is the strangest song to ever be made. Like, I don't know what the thought process was behind making that song, but it was perfect. I've never been more attracted to Ken. Sorry, Ryan Gos Gosling. Gosling. Uh, yeah. Uh, he... I hope that song gets used in the movie, by the way. We'll talk about the movie at some point on the show, I'm sure, but it's not today. Um, Barbie Girl is a classic. Staying Alive is a classic. My mind is very fucked when it comes to music sometimes. Like, I'll rank weird-ass songs above songs that I know are, like, they have, like, the legendary status even. Barbie Girl wins. <laughs> like, that, that's where I am right now. That's how I feel. Barbie Girl is just that influential to my generation especially. 
It was just such a banger. Next, this one is also a very hard. There's a lot of really hard ones here, but this one especially is very hard, especially if you're like a 2000s kid. So you have Blue Dobbity versus Tub Thumping. Dude, those two songs are like the same thing, but in entirely different like genres, entirely different everything. But like they're the same song. It's just not. I don't even know if that makes any sense, but they're very similar. Not like in sound, but like, you know, I put these two on like their own lists, kind of like they're very interesting. They're very different. I think Blue Dobbity is a classic. It's been used in some things. Tub Thumping, though, is like the classic 2000s song. Like fucking American Pie. Blue Dobbity was in Big Fat Liar, sure, and that's great in and of itself. But American Pie was like the movie for, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, like teens. Like it was like the movie. And this is in the party scene, which is like the scene. Like, ugh, this is a hard one, folks. I can't just look at what they were in because that doesn't matter effectively at the end of the day. It's not that big of a deal. But like, these are two mm, fucking Megalodons. <laughs> two just legendary tracks in probably for like the worst reasons. I'm going to go with Tub Thumping. Because you can't not fuck to Tub Thumping. You cannot fuck around with Tub Thumping. You hear Tub Thumping and you want to get knocked down and get back up. Like, that's what you want to do. That's the song. Tub Thumping wins. Next, Ice Ice Baby versus Cotton Eye Joe. Another one where it's like these songs are very dramatically different, but I don't categorize them much different in my own brain. Like, like so different total polar opposites but like in my brain i'm like these are the same song <laughs> like i don't know why i think a lot of one hit wonders kind of just get put into the one hit wonder category and then that's it that's that's their filing cabinet that's where they stay but uh, i mean this is like two of those like ice ice baby is so fucking goofy cotton eye joe is about fucking chlamydia or gonorrhea or some shit I think it's gonorrhea. Let me Google it. Let me Google it. What is Cotton Eye Joe about? A few moments later. The Urban Dictionary entry lists the term Cotton Eye Joe as the act of a man having his urethra swabbed to test for STDs. Oh, so it's not about having an STD. It's about getting tested for STDs. That's weird. Uh, so since it's not about like the clap, I don't know how I feel about it anymore. <laughs> um... See, I would pick Ice Ice Baby, but there's one reason I'm not going to. Because of how bad he stole the fucking Queen and David Bowie song. Not a fan of that. I don't like that. He didn't do anything. I love the clip online where it's like him saying that he was innocent. He's like, like he goes ding 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 That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes ding 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. He was really trying to get away with it. And he thought adding that extra do was going to help. And it didn't. He he makes no money off that song. And it's amazing. Uh, so Ice Ice Baby, not making money. Not going further. Cotton Eye Joe fucking takes it. In the shock of the century. Next, we have Teenage Dirtbag versus Safety Dance. Now, I don't categorize these ones the same. These are very different in my books. Another fucking American Pie song also. What the fuck's going on with that? I think it was teen uh was it american pie or was it loser i think it might have been loser but same same thing it had jason biggs and mina savari in it same thing um safety dance though on the other hand men without hats is a really weird band but this song it slaps it's just they're a weird fucking band teenage dirtbag is a weird one like i love teenage dirtbag but I fucking hate the lead singer of Weedus. Like, he just sounds so fucking weird. And I don't know, like, if he's just doing, like, the falsetto. I don't know if he's, like... I don't know. He just... It's, he sounds really weird. Like, it doesn't quite sound like a man, but doesn't quite sound like a woman. It's, like, the very uncanny, like, Nick Gilder line. Like, he just... It's this very strange voice. Falsetto has always rubbed me in a weird way. Sometimes they're good. Like, when it's Justin Timberlake, for example, or when it's, like, the Jonas Brothers. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, falsettos can be good. His is just kind of weird. 
Safety Dance is also a kind of weird song. It's probably about condoms. I don't know what Safety Dance is about, but it's probably about condoms. Um, we're going to go with Safety Dance. Safety Dance is a classic. Teenage Dirtbag's great, don't get me wrong, but I think Safety Dance gets it. Next, we have Jump Around versus What is Love. Now, as much as I love Jump Around... What is Love is just the song. It is so fucking iconic. Every time I hear that song, I just go back to Night at the Roxbury, the fucking head dance. Like, it's such a classic song. What is Love will never not just tear my heart apart. Like, I just, I love it. I love it so goddamn much. So jump around. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't get put against some fucking jobber. If it was jump around versus Cotton Eye Joe, jump around probably would have won. But like, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No more. What's next? Sunglasses at night versus Kung Fu fighting. Oh dear. Here we are. We have Kung Fu fighting, which is a classic. It's been in everything. But then we have sunglasses at night, which as a straight man makes me horny. <laughs> it is so good. And I don't mean just horny in general. I mean like horny for Corey Hart. Like <laughs> I want to fuck Corey Hart when I hear this song. So good. If I was a girl in the 80s, my bed sheets would still be wet if you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I don't know what Corey Hart was like, but like this song is just so, so fucking goaded. So fucking goaded. Kung Fu fighting is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I could listen to Kung Fu fighting every day, all day, for an eternity, and I would be okay. I'd be happy. I would just be fucking crane kicking shit all the time. Like, but sunglasses at night, dude. I already do listen to it every day, all day, for an eternity. So we're going with Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart. Is there another one? Oh, there is. How many more do we have here for the first round? We have three more for the first round. And we're saving the best, like, probably the best one for the main event here. So you better keep your eyes open. So now we have Video Killed the Radio Star versus What's Up by Four Non Blondes. Bugles. We're one who wonder. This was like the big song that came out when MTV was becoming a thing. And people nowadays don't understand what the fuck MTV was. Because, like, MTV nowadays, it's just ridiculousness. It's just bullshit. Back in the day, MTV meant something. And this song represents the beginning of MTV, which was one of the most influential, iconic television channels that there's probably ever been. But at the same time, you have What's Up next to it. I'm looking at this like... You could have the song that made MTV, which is Video Killed the Radio Star. It didn't make it, but it was it was right there at the beginning. Like it was like it needed that. That was like the push over the edge. So you have Video Killed the Radio Star over here, classic. Then you have What's Up, which is a great song, but like you have a song that made MTV, a song that was on MTV. Like one's a little bit higher. Completely different songs, and I love both of them a lot, but Video Killed the Radio Star takes it. Easy peasy. Next, You Get What You Give versus Putting on the Ritz. You Get and You Give was the new Radicals. Putting on the Ritz was Taco. <laughs> Taco. I went into a Valley Village, which is like a Canadian version of a thrift store. I don't think they have them in America. They probably don't. Um, but I went there a few months ago, and I was looking at all like... Because I always look at like the CDs and the cassettes... And I saw a taco cassette. And I'm like, if this doesn't have putting it on the Ritz on it, I'm not getting it. But if it has putting on the Ritz on it, it's mine. It forever. And I looked at it. Putting on the Ritz right there. Boom. Purchased. Purchased fucking made. Now, if I looked at any cassette, I would not think if you get what you gives on there, I'd buy that cassette. Not in a million years. Not even if it's New Radicals. Well, eh. if it was one of their CDs, because I'm a CD guy, I might buy it. But, like, I had to get the taco cassette because Putting on the Ritz was on it. Like, I had to. So, Putting on the Ritz takes it. That, uh, it's just, I value that song more than I value You Get What You Give. So, it's pretty simple. Now, this, this one is the hard one. This one might take a minute. 
because we have Fountains of Wayne's Stacy's mom versus Gautier's somebody that I used to know. It is weird because I think somebody that I used to know is like the only fucking one hit wonder on here that was like from within like the last decade. Like, I don't think there's any recent one hit wonders that I put on this list, although that could be a different video for a different time because there's a lot of those out there too. But somebody that I used to know, tell me where you were in 2011. What were you doing? You know what I was doing? I was sitting in my parents' car in the back seat on a gray afternoon listening to this shit on the radio, debating existence at 9 to 10 years old. I was having a time. I was having depression as a 9 to 10 year old for three minutes listening to this fucking song. But it was like good depression. Like it was like happy depression. I wanted this song. Like I, I don't know why, but it clicked with me instantly. And I, I've never been the kind of person that likes what's modern. I do not like modern things. But when this song came out, I was all about it. I wanted it. It was mine. And I still look at this song this way. But then you have Stacy's mom. Oh my god. <laughs> like, seriously? You can't not... It's Stacy's mom. She's got it going on. It's such a classic. You can't listen to Stacy's mom and not feel happy. You can You cannot not sing along to it it is impossible it is the song for a 2000s kid like me you hear it and you're just in heaven for three minutes but then there's somebody that i used to know which is the same thing this is very difficult i don't make very hard decisions con consistently i don't make hard decisions that much but this is a hard decision this is a really Really hard decision to make. These are both such good songs. And it's besmirching to put either of them down. Because they're both so good. So, so, so good. This is the main event. Even though we're not done yet. This is the main event. What would you do if you had to pick between Stacy's mom and somebody that I used to know? You couldn't fucking do it either. I doubt you could. You could not, person listening. You couldn't do it. Make me an argument in the comments. Make me an argument on my social media. Make me an argument anywhere as to which one you genuinely think is the best. Because this is hard. This ain't easy. This is a really fucking tough decision. I'm going to pick somebody that I used to know. I got to do it. It's just for me, especially like growing up, both of these songs were a big part of my life. Like I, there were points when I heard these songs and I'm like, shit, this is a good song. And I still listen to it. Like it impacted me that much. Cause I'm like, this is what good fucking music is. But somebody that I used to know is just different. It hits so different. It is the most happy, depressing song you could ever listen to. It defined 2011, which in a lot of ways was like the peak of my childhood. Like, I was old enough to have a brain, but young enough to not care. Like, life was just perfect in 2011. Not perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. But, like, that was the time for me when I was younger. It was my total, total adolescence. Like, eight, nine, ten years old, in that range, that was just it. So, I gotta pick somebody they used to know, just for nostalgia. Now, it's time to go back, because we... <laughs> now that this has made it, that's all for the round number one. So, we gotta go for round number two here. So, I'm going back to the beginning, because I don't have a fucking graphic made up of a goddamn tournament here. So, I have to go back and remember which ones I picked. Oh, man, that's gonna be difficult. I don't know if I can even do that. I'm going to have to cut the video here. We'll come back and I'll do part two. Just, I need to go find out which ones I picked.
a few moments later. All right, so I went back and I made sure of everyone that I picked and I have them all noted down here. So we have 15 songs left from the winners of the first round. So we are into round two and seeing as there is 15, it's an odd number. So we are going to be doing all of these as triple threats. It's 1v1v1. Any song for themselves really here. So we're starting off with Take On Me versus Kiss From A Rose versus Achy Breaky Heart. Now, with this whole one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one com... Uh, fucking... What is the word I'm looking for? The one-on-one... -on -one, not combat. The style. The... There's a word. I just... I cannot think. Um, so... With it being one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, it makes it a bit more difficult. Because you really have to look at every song a little bit more. So, Take On Me, classic song. We've been over that. It is a classic. You can visualize the music video in your head. It was so ahead of its time. Kiss From A Rose, amazing song. Slaps in every single way. And then you have Achy Breaky Heart. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to just cancel one of these fuckers out right away. We're just going to have to get rid of them. So that we can narrow it down. We're going to just take off one by one. So we're going to take off Achy Breaky Heart. Achy Breaky Heart ain't winning this one. Let's be fair. So Achy Breaky Heart's gone. Sorry, Achy Breaky Heart. You made it this far. You made it to round two. Uh, so we got Take On Me. I'm actually, I'm going to cross out Achy Breaky Heart so I remember that it's gone. So Take On Me and Kiss From A Rose. See, Take On Me has more of the classic factor than Kiss From A Rose does. Kiss from a Rose, arguably, in my opinion, is a better song. That's the thing. How do we rank? I'm going to pick Kiss from a Rose. It's nothing against Take On Me. It's a classic and it has every right to be. But Kiss from a Rose is just that much better in my eyes. It beats Take On Me. So, let's move on. Next, we have Bittersweet Symphony versus Never Gonna Give You Up versus I Touch Myself. Oh, no. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, shit. What have we done? These are all very good songs. Once again, <laughs> this is not easy, folks. So never going to give you up. Probably going to win. But we have to look at all the options here. Bittersweet Symphony is great. I Touch Myself is also great. Which one do we cut out first? What is the weakest link between these three songs? I can't say it's I Touch Myself. That song is just so classic in my mind. I can't fathom putting it below Bittersweet Symphony. So Bittersweet Symphony gets fucking cut. It is out of the tournament. It is out at round two. Good for Bittersweet Symphony. Thank you for coming. So, never going to give you up and I Touch Myself. Once again, I Touch Myself. It's... <laughs> I hate saying that. That song is one of my favorite songs. I love it dearly. It will always hold a special place in my heart. But Rick Astley. Never gonna give you... Rick Roll, goddammit. You can't beat the Rick Roll guy. And it's not gonna happen. I Touch Myself is out at round two. Next, we got Barbie Girl versus Tub Thumping versus Cotton Eye Joe. I don't even think we have to take away one and then the second one. I think Barbie Girl just wins. Like, I can't, I could not put Tub Thumping or Cotton Eye Joe above Barbie Girl. I, I could not do it. So, Tub Thumping and Cotton Eye Joe are both out. Despite them both being great songs, Barbie Girl is Barbie Girl. It's going to come down. I know what it's going to come down to. And I'm, I'm not excited, but we'll see. So next, we have Safety Dance versus What is Love versus Sunglasses at Night. Man, that's a tough one. That's a tough cookie. Safety Dance is out right away. I don't think they're proceeding. I don't think they're beating out anybody here. So we got What is Love versus Sunglasses at Night. Now, Sunglasses at Night is a very special song to me. It hits me right in the penis. What is Love? Hits me right in the fucking head. Because I can't stop doing the fucking dance. Like. What do we do? What is more important here? Um, fuck man. I'm looking at these. And I'm just thinking like. What do we do? What do. These are both very similar songs as well. Like you could go to a club in the 80s. And hear both of these. And well I think. What is love is more 90s. 
But, like, you could go to a club even nowadays. If you wanted to go to a cool club that still plays old songs, you could go to a club and hear these both. Like, you could jam out to both of them. You could definitely slip some roofies and some drinks to these songs. Like, you could do it. It's <laughs> they're those kind of songs. Oh, man. It's really 80s versus 90s here, ain't it? Because I think What Is Love has to be 90s, right? Or very, maybe very late 80s, but like, it, it's got to be 90s, I think. It's too dancey, too fucking techno-y, it's got to be 90s. <sighs> this is a hard one. This one is not easy. We're going to go with What Is Love, because it's that, it's it's a classic song. Sunglass, like, I feel really bad taking sunglasses at night out, but like, What Is Love is just that classic. Like, it, it's so good. Next, we have for the final of the finals of round two. We're going through this pretty quick. Video killed the radio star versus putting on the Ritz versus somebody that I used to know. Easy. Somebody that I used to know takes it. Like I, I want to have some of these songs have more of a chance. But the thing with the way I've done it and the competition aspect and where it's one v one, you have like. You put Video Killed the Radio Star up against What's Up. Like, that was going to win. But it's not going to win against somebody that I used to know. Like, it it can beat the less good songs, but it can't beat this one. It cannot beat somebody that I used to know. It just cannot. So, somebody that I used to know proceeds. So, how many songs do we have left for round three? We have one, two, three, four, five. That's a weird mixture. That's a odd, very strange number to have. So, let me look here. We have Kiss from a Rose. We have Never Gonna Give You Up. We have Barbie Girl. We have, what the fuck is that one? What, what are they from right here? Oh, What Is Love, sorry. And then, somebody that used to know. Five songs. How the fuck do we go about doing that now? We could put somebody that I used to know against all of these songs and it'd probably beat them individually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put somebody that I used to know in its own tier. That makes it to the finals. We'll do it like that, because I know it will either way. What what the other songs have a, more of a fair chance? So we have Kiss from a Rose versus Never Gonna Give You Up. Man. This one's actually probably the hardest competition Never Gonna Give You Up has had. Does it mean Never Gonna Give You Up is going to lose? No, because it's probably not. But it's close, because these are very classic songs. But... It's never going to give you up. It's Rick Roll. It's Rick Astley, goddammit. You can't beat him. It's not possible. Kiss from a Rose is out, officially. Sorry. Never going to give you up proceeds to round four. Barbie Girl versus What is Love. Also, kind of a hard one. I kind of know how it's going, but it's kind of a hard one. What is Love's a classic. But it's Barbie Girl. You can't beat Barbie Girl. I love what is love. Although that being said, once it gets to the later part of the song, it's kind of, it falls apart a little bit. Barbie Girl doesn't do that. Barbie Girl sticks with it the whole fucking time. What is love is out. So now, do I do a triple threat between the final three? Or do I do a 1v1 and the winner takes somebody that I used to know? I think we have to do a triple threat. Because this is monumental, the three songs that are on here. We have Never Gonna Give You Up versus Barbie Girl versus somebody that I used to know. Holy shit. How did I get myself in this predicament? I don't know what to do. I don't know who wins. It's difficult. Never Gonna Give You Up is iconic. It is the meme. It is the Rick Roll. Barbie Girl is Barbie Girl. Such a different song than anything else. So strange. So sexually overtoned. Somebody that I used to know is one of the forming songs from my younger years. I'm sure a lot of people have very good things to say about somebody that I used to know. It might just be me. I don't know. But man, where do we go from here? We can't do a tie because I'm not that stupid. We have to pick one. So what I'm going to do, it is triple threat ruling. It's 1v1v1 here. But. I'm going to kick out either Barbie Girl or Never Gonna Give You Up right here, right now. And I think it's Barbie Girl that's going. I I feel weird doing it. But I think Never Gonna Give You Up beats Barbie Girl. I honestly feel that in my heart of hearts, 
Barbie Girl is fantastic, legendary, iconic, amazing in every sense of the way. But never gonna give you up is the anthem of a generation. Probably two. It could be the 90s anthem and the 2000s anthem. It is that legendary. And it's still legendary today. People still think about it today. People still think about Barbie Girl, yeah. But Never Gonna Give You Up is just on a higher level. It's on a different level than Barbie Girl. So now, it's the hardest decision I could have ever possibly made. I thought it was going to be Barbie Girl going up against somebody that I used to know. I thought that was going to be hard enough. But now, it's not even that. It's Never Gonna Give You Up versus somebody that I used to know. How do you do this? Do you just erase the part in your brain that's super gay for Gautier? Do you just erase the part in your brain that doesn't want to dance like Rick Astley? What do you do? Where do you put these feelings, these emotions? How do you choose? Man, how do you do it? Never Gonna Give You Up is iconic. It is spectacular. It is superb. But, but, somebody that I used to know didn't need a meme to make the impact it made. It didn't need that shit. Rick, uh, never gonna give you up, I'm going to argue, if it wasn't for Rick Rolling, would it be as iconic now as it is? If it wasn't for the meme. Somebody that I used to know didn't have a meme. It didn't need a meme. But it's still legendary. It's still iconic. It's still, like, my favorite song ever. Not really. It's one of them. It's my favorite one-hit wonder ever. I could say that for sure. But it didn't need the meme. I kind of feel like Never Gonna Give You Up needed the meme. It might not have needed it. It might not have. I could almost give it that. Maybe it would have the legendary status without it. But. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's partially the, it's, you know, it's the meme that got it here. We wouldn't be talking about it. Because there's so many other one-hit wonders that I could have talked about today, but I didn't. This could have been one of them. If it wasn't for the meme. It's a great song, don't get me wrong. But it was never going to be as huge as it was if it wasn't for the internet. If it wasn't for Rickrolling. Somebody that I used to know got there. It didn't need it. It's just that different somebody that i used to know wins okay i'm sorry rick astley i'm sorry never gonna give you up both amazing 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 songs somebody that i used to know just takes it that's just how it is so ladies and gentlemen that's it somebody that i used to know is potentially the greatest one hit wonder song ever made let me know if you feel any different either in the comments let me know on social media let me know anywhere you can speaking of social media you can follow me on instagram at this is dilly that's where i do all my posting it's where i do all my things you can go look at my baby if you want to but don't be weird about it uh what else you can watch my follow let's play i don't know if you all know this but i have been doing a follow three let's play recently on the daily plays youtube channel links are everywhere my main link for everything is going to be in the description you could be listening to this on a pod platform you could be watching this on youtube or spotify the video version is now on spotify Links are everywhere for what I'm doing. I'm all over the place. Let me know what you thought of the episode and make sure to like it, leave a comment, subscribe if you're on YouTube, follow the podcast if you're on the pod platforms. And ladies and gentlemen, I am Dilly. This is Dilly. I've been your host. Thank you for watching another episode of The Dilly Show. I will see you all in the next one. Somebody that I used to know wins. Easy peasy lemon fucking squeezy. Not really. It wasn't that easy, but it, it won. It needed to. It, it needed to win. It's just, it's so different. It is special. It is incredible. It makes my feet tickle.